Challenge. to remove the door cards. The bottom half we're gonna get rid of and replace. We're also going to pull the seats out so we can try to get the carpet and the center console off. That's, that's it. So what I'm doing behind there is just sneaking my hook tool in between the door card and the handle to just grab the clip and pull it towards the crank so you can release the clip from the window crankshaft there. Uh, always put the clip back on so that you don't lose it until you're ready to install the, the window crank. Trim pliers, these ones are tapered. You can just sneak them in behind the panel and then as you apply pressure, it pops the clips usually without breaking them. There goes the speaker grill. There's a handful of screws that we'll remove. We're gonna retain our uh, upper door skin and we're just gonna replace the lower portion. Just the head of this screw was resting up against the edge of the speaker. Same with this screw. And this one's actually, somebody's driven it right through the, the frame of the speaker itself. Not sure if these speakers were an upgrade. indicator in the dash when the, the brake is engaged but it runs on the top side of the carpet so to avoid having to cut this section of the carpet I'm gonna disconnect that wire So we watched a couple YouTube videos on how to pull the tombstone and it looks like the easiest way to get the vents out is just with a shoelace and then I have a hook tool that I use to get the window cranks off that I'll fish the shoelace back out with. So we'll feed this shoelace through. Pull it back out the other side with the hook and then just pull and the vent comes out really easy. Yeah, not too bad. There should be one screw behind each of the vents. And there's one wiring harness connector for the headlight and the hazard switch on the back. That was one. So there's two wiring harness connectors. One of them is gonna be for your speakers. The other one is gonna be for the power ground and memory for the stereo itself. The next is gonna be your antenna wire. If you reach in, this is a coax cable, so it'll just pull apart. And then the last step, there's a ground wire that attaches to the back with one more Phillips screw. Put the Phillips screw back in so that we don't lose it. That's how you pull a stock stereo.
started on taking the interior apart last time. We're back working on that. We're gonna get the dash out, but we decided to get an early start this morning. It's minus five degrees Celsius out. We're gonna start the car and run it while we're working on the inside to try to keep a bit warm. it this way though because the battery's in the trunk and so if we run into an issue with it not starting we can just jump start it off one of our cars from the back right uh, why don't we talk about this when we did our shifter tower rebuild uh, we noticed that the floor seat boot was just torn and pretty much garbage so we're gonna replace this floor seat with a new one and this will stop those exhaust fumes at least from getting into the cockpit area. How quick is it to do that modification? Uh, super quick. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Actually, why don't we just throw the new floor seat in right now while we're waiting for the car. <laughs> so we don't end up <laughs> yeah, dead. Yeah, so the, the engine bay, the firewall, and the the floor area is sealed. Like there are very few holes that the manufacturer puts through those areas for the reason to keep exhaust fumes out of the cabin area. Um, the, the few holes that there are in the firewall are generally plugged with a rubber boot and then wiring harness will run through it and they try to keep that as sealed as possible. Really the only hole that goes through the cockpit to the exterior of the car is this hole through the transmission tunnel. We ordered this from Mazda. It was actually cheaper to get it from the dealer than it was to get off of like Amazon. If I had known it was in this bad of shape when I ordered the uh, transmission shifter tower rebuild then I would have ordered this at the same time. Yeah check back in episode two to watch us do the uh, transmission shifter rebuild. I need a little bit of petroleum jelly lubricant something on here to get this to slide down. You only need a little bit to stop the friction from applying too much pressure on the rubber. The bracket, all it did was held the wire going to the parking brake indicator. This wire just connects to the parking brake and then an icon comes on the dash when it's connected to remind you that your parking brake is on. It's unneeded so the bracket won't go back on. This wire is not going to get reinstalled. Oh damn. <laughs> we have no cup holders inside. We deleted our, our cup holder. <laughs> How much gas do we have? Uh, we have negative gas right now. The gauge has never worked since I've owned the car. Back in episode two, when we removed the soft top and a bunch of the components in the back, we talked about how there was a, a big squirrel or rat's nest back there. And behind the passenger seat, there's a bunch of chewed wires. And I think that's why the uh, fuel gauge doesn't work. But when we've got the interior completely gutted, we'll fix those wires and make sure that everything for the fuel system back there works properly. Okay. We'll get the heater controls out now and go from there. These ones are just Phillips. We will run into a point where we need to turn the car off. So the heater controls are actually attached to the heater box underneath the dash by some cables and we'll need to go under the dash to access those cables. Each of the mounting bolts to the dash are covered by some little plastic cover. There's actually a little slot that can fit the screwdriver in from the end there. So just pop all these off. There's one on either side of the center console and then there's two on each side of the dash. Slide your flathead screwdriver in and they just pop right out. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the four bolts out that bolt the center console to the transmission tunnel. Those are 14 mil. And then there's 
the two 10 millimeter bolts on the outside of the dash. You need to release the uh, hood release cable from the dash as well. So there's a nut on the back side of it that you just loosen off. And then you can pull the cable through the opening to release it from the dash there. Oh, the interior fuse box cover. So why did the fuse cover come off? Uh, must have just been sitting on top of this cable from the previous owner. I'd imagine he popped it off and just never got it back on properly. I'm gonna try to get the glove box out without dumping this inside the car. The glove box is just held in with a couple screws down at the bottom. Phillips head. physical door inside the heater box that will move to block off your heater core and give you cold air or open to allow the air to blow through your heater core and give you heat. There's also a blend door for direction whether you want heat at your feet or the defrost or coming out of the vents. There's a cable up here. That cable runs to the heater controls on the front of the console so we'll disconnect it here and there's another one to the left there's another cable right down here that we have to undo and so I believe there's three in total. We'll undo all three cables and then we'll pull them out still attached to the heater controls. So to disconnect the cables it just slides over top of the stud. So all you have to do is pull the cable like this off the stud and then release it from the metal tab like that. The last cable is on this stud right here. Slide that off and disconnect the cable from the metal clip. And we also need to disconnect the wiring to the vanity light. It's surrounded by a foam insulator. You don't need to disconnect the foam, you just need to depress the wiring harness connector on this side and then pull it apart like that. So we're going to disconnect the door ajar light and then if you pan up just a little bit right here is a wiring harness connector for the cigarette lighter and you want to disconnect both of those. There's a brace that the glove box bolts do and I'm going to try to get that off right now also. So on the brace one of the screws is a Phillips but on the other side it's looks like an eight millimeter. Next we're going to take off the steering column shroud. One screw on either side, a couple screws on the bottom of the steering column. Sorry, four screws total. One hidden way up there. After you pull those screws, So with those two screws removed, you got to give a pretty good pull to get the hood to come off. It should just pull straight towards you. It's held in with these pretty strong metal tabs, so a decent amount of force is needed to get it to come off. I also want to take off this bracket that mounts the center console. It's just held to the floor with two Phillips screws. We're just going to eliminate this bracket. Uh, it only gave mounting locations for the center console that we're not going to put back in. Next, we're going to take the gauge cluster out. Uh, it's held in with four screws. There's two wiring harness connectors. A white one and a black one here that you need to remove. And then down there is the speedometer cable that you need to unclip. Press the tab, pull the connector out. If you push on this side, it should release the cable. There it goes. There's one more wiring harness connector right here. It's got a little tab 
on it, just push and release. So we need to undo both of those and drop the steering column almost all the way down. It, uh, it bolts to the crossbar built into the dash. And so we'll unbolt the steering column, we'll undo the wiring harnesses that we need to, and uh, we'll get the, the dash loose from under here. There's a floor plate that bolts the steering column to the firewall. You need to undo this nut here and same on the other side. So once you've got the two nuts on the floor undone, your steering column should be fairly loose. I left one bolt in there, just finger tight. You actually want to undo the floor plate first and then disconnect the two bolts to the dash. And just be careful that you're not underneath it because the steering column will drop quite a bit. Like I said, it'll pretty much rest on the seat. So once you've got the last bolt out, the steering column, like I said, will just hang and pretty much drop almost onto the seat. So there's a factory zap strap here that's reusable. If you just lift up on that tab, the zap strap will come undone, and it just holds the wiring harness to the uh, steering column. Pull that off, and your steering column will drop the rest of the way. Once the steering column is down, it's pretty easy to access this group of wiring harnesses here. And this loom is actually the main harness to the dash components. So you don't have to unplug really anything in the dash, like the radio, the vanity lights, or anything, because they're wired into this main harness. So once we pull the dash out, these connectors will come with, and these, this side will stay in the car. So just disconnect all the wiring harnesses in here related to the dash. So four connectors total. These will come out with the dash. These ones down here will stay in the car. So just slide your screwdriver in wherever you can and pop up this cover. But this bolt has very little clearance. Because there's limited space in between this bolt and the windshield, most people just use a wrench to try to get on the head of the bolt or the other end of the wrench. It's actually pretty awkward to get in there. I have a short head quarter inch ratchet with a shallow snap on 10 millimeter socket that actually fits on there pretty good. Enough for me to crack that loose and probably get the bolt most of the way out. What you don't want to do is loosen the bolt out enough that you can't get your socket back off. It'll jam up against your windshield. Ours is already broken, our windshield but you could crack yours easily by jamming the socket in there. So I'm just gonna back this bolt out a little bit until I can still get my socket off. So now I've got it loose enough that I can get a couple fingers on it and loosen it the rest of the way out. And that's your bolt. So I forgot the wiring harness to the the blower motor control box. So there's two wires to the fan there, and then there's another wiring harness under here. Yeah. carpet so under here is a bunch of carpet underlay that is good for sound deadening but it really just retains the smell that smell the kind of smelly smell a smelly smell that smells smelly it'll be important for us to get 
all that out and then uh, clean up any other sound deadening that's under here. So we'll use some heat and a scraper of some sort to get all this up. We're just gonna use like some putty knives and some cleaners, just whatever I kind of found around the house. Uh, we may go and get some adhesive remover if we need it. The big one actually has a lot more flex, so you'll do less damage to the paint under the adhesive. The best thing to do would be to use like a plastic scraper, but I don't have one of those, so we'll use what we have. The underlay is garbage. We don't really care about it. We're just gonna rip it up. Before we ever started filming we found a massive rat's nest underneath the rear firewall here and the wires have been chewed that go to the power antenna and you can see this cable housing is all chewed up a couple of the wires are chewed up and the antenna wire is actually split in half right here so we're going to delete all the wiring and we're going to delete the power antenna so for right now, we'll pop up all the clips that hold the antenna wire on the car. And we're just gonna delete this whole broken antenna wire. Carpet is completely deleted. We cleaned up all the underlay and any little bits of adhesive stuck to the floor. Really happy with how this turned out just as is. I thought there was gonna be a lot more rust or debris on the floor from the soft top previously leaking or something. Uh, we'll still probably grab a can of gloss white spray paint and just clean up all these spots that are gray and, and just primer from the factory and make this all just one white color. We got the transmission tunnel shifter floor plate installed which did a couple things. It cut down on the road noise and it stopped the exhaust fumes from coming up inside the car. We've got some more work to do on the dash and some of the components under here. So we're gonna leave the car as is for now uh, until we get the rest of that work done and the dash is ready to be reinstalled. But for now, this is the way the car sits. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel.